Hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to another fuzzy slipper edition of Cape Conversations. We've got a good one for you today. Oh, she's dynamic. She's terrific. And you're just going to love her. So come along. Let's have another fuzzy slipper Cape Conversations. Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you today to another fuzzy slipper edition of Cape Conversations in my living room, and I am with the perky, effervescent, and fabulous Annie Hart Cool, whom I'm, I've known with mm, maybe a hundred years now, I don't know, how long have we known each other? 30? Probably. Probably 30, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not even sure how we met, but we did. Arts Foundation. Was it through the Arts Foundation? I was the executive director there 30 yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah. And you and I did those comedy nights. That was it. Yeah, you you had you needed someone to step in at the Daniel Webster. That was it. Yeah, and I did my first stand up with you. That oh that's right. And then you went off to be a fabulous success and I just kind of petered out. That's all oh, so stop it. Oh stop it. Anyway, we're here to talk about a lot of things this morning, Annie, but one of the things, you're with Sotheby's International, correct? Yeah. Right. And you're their uh, gazillion dollar salesperson here on the Cape, I think. Well, I finished um, ninth out of 2,500 agents last year, so I do pretty well. Yeah. I've been doing it for 22 years, so, you know, I'm pretty much referral only now, which is yeah. kind of exciting. Yeah, good, good for you. You don't have to beat the bushes. No, no. I love my job and it shows. Yeah, yeah. I hated it and it showed. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it isn't for everybody. No, 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 no. It wasn't for me, that's for sure. Anyway, um, that aside, so tell me, Annie, how are you coping in this time of real estate in the time of pandemic, I guess? Well, you know, um, for me, I'm still busy. Uh, and I, I think that this is a perfect, you know, you just have to change your thinking about it, right? So I'm still busy. I'm doing Zoom meetings with my, um, with my sellers, um, keeping them up to date. This is the, the opportunity for sellers to start doing some real work around getting their houses prepared. Sure. Um, talking about scheduling dump runs and deciding whether you should still have your 40 year old daughter's Barbies and, you know, <laughs> getting things out of closets <laughs> that, you know, are okay. lingering. Um, this is just a guess. Probably not the Barbies. <laughs> not the Barbies. Right. Well, it's, it's just where people are really thinking about right sizing their house. Um, cause you're trapped in it. So you just have to kind of tweak the way you're thinking. If you're considering putting your house on the market because you are going to right size, meaning you're either going to get bigger, and after this um, pandemic, people will need bigger houses for the breeders out there. And <laughs> those of us who are um, grandparents will be looking to downsize. So um, this is a great time to start thinking about what it would take for you to right size. And I've been doing little, you know, little Zoom meetings about how to go about doing that. Great. So Great. I've been busy. Good. And your team has been busy, I'm sure. My team has been busy. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, it's, it, it is um, one of the things that I try to do is uh, manage expectations. And don't we all need a little bit of that? Um, because we really don't know where this is going. We don't know how long it's going to be. So when people start to get nervous and upset, and there's a lot of that, I mean, I think about my folks, I have a husband and, and four pets, so I'm pretty well entertained here. <laughs> but there are people who are alone, right. who have no one, um, who live inside their heads, and sometimes that can be a scary place when CNN is on all day. So I think um, conversations are really important right now, not texting, not email, the actual pick up the phone and reach out to some of those folks that you know may be struggling with all this quiet. That's a wonderful piece of advice for sure. So do you do for tours of your houses or open houses, do you start with some sort of photography or, you know, sure. you know what we, right before this started, um, 
and we knew it was coming our way, right? We kind of got the word right around the 1st of March. Uh, I ran through all my listings with my video camera. I got one of those fun little selfie sticks that is, um, it's called a gimbal and it doesn't, doesn't pick up how heavy you're breathing or, or that you're shaking. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran through all my houses because I knew people were going to want to see the house. And I knew that I wasn't want to put anybody at risk by bringing people through a house mm -hmm. who may or may not have been sick. So, cause we don't know. Right. So I did right. video tours of all of my properties and going forward, <clears throat> I have some new listings coming on mm -hmm. and I'm signing mm -hmm. right up for those video tours with the photo with the professional photographer, mm -hmm. because I think mm -hmm. virtual tours is where we're going to be. Here's the other thing that's been surprising. We're all trapped at home and the um, uptick in going online through our MLS system or Zillow or realtor.com, whatever the program is that you're attached to, uh, that online service has shot up. People are looking, people are shopping online. They're, they're entertaining the hopeful. Right. Of coming out and buying. So it's the perfect time to get anything virtual, anything um, that you can put online that would aid a insomniac buyer who's shopping <laughs> at 3 p.m. <laughs> well, my son is a uh, realtor down in Rhode Island. He has his own company. Oh, he's got some beautiful properties. Yes, he does. And But he's been doing um, the video online and now. I mean, he meets the people, he says, you have to show, you have to look at the video before you make the appointment. Exactly. It's a rule. I said, well, how do you get away with that? He goes, because mom, I tell him I won't show them the house unless they look at the video. Because if they're That's not, what I've been doing. It, why waste your time? Exactly. I have one house that I love, 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 but the bedrooms upstairs are tiny, 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 tiny. And everybody I've shown it to has said, Oh my God, the bedrooms upstairs are tiny. And so what I started doing is, and before I'd even make the appointment, I send the floor plan. I say to the other agent, have them check out the dimensions of the bedrooms upstairs. I'm not letting them in unless they totally get what the bedrooms upstairs look like. Right. Well, and, and as Justin says, he meets them on the outside of the house at 10 feet away. And the, and the course, yeah, I'm at the door. Wait in the driveway. Yeah. So you do the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. So uh, you don't deal with rentals, do you? I don't. Um, does your company? Yes. And how? Only has, summer. Okay, but has anybody said how summer is going? I I've heard through our meetings that that people are canceling. Yeah. Yeah. Because we really don't know what's what's happening. around the corner, right? Right. 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 Um, it was pretty scary, I think, when I heard that there were so many, what was it, two weekends ago, so many people coming across the bridge to open. And I live in a neighborhood that's summer. It's summer. Right. And right. many of those houses, and they, they've been torn down, and now they're big houses, have summer cars in them in the driveway. Right. And it's disturbing because we have such a, not only a fragile system, and no toilet paper anywhere on Cape Cod. <laughs> Oh, it's, but it's for it, but for our our medical system and our infra that kind of infrastructure, we're not set up for this. Right, right. Well, it's a it's a tough one, but you know, uh, on the other side, they pay taxes. I know. They so do. you know, and um, my frustration hasn't been with them arriving. My frustration has been with them arriving and expecting us to be up and running. Yeah. There's yeah. been some heated moments that I've heard of where yeah. people have come and gone, what do you mean Seafood That's Sam's isn't letting us in the door? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what do you mean it's a take out? Right. You right. know, it's a, it's a global pandemic. There's yeah. nowhere you can go <laughs> to right. escape. Well, it's kind of funny to me because I, I also know that when we, um, that some of the folks that are coming down here and they think it's going to be the 4th of July because they're here, right. but it's not. Right. You know, we're all living in serious business. I will say though, the person who started the Close the Bridges, I, I don't know the person, I don't even know the name of the person, got five right. signatures. But quite frankly, 
it would be it's it's not only un-American because you have the right in this country to move about. Correct. Um, it's all unless the the president would say I'm declaring martial law, which he isn't. That's exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I was again, I was in a meeting this morning, and they were talking about it, and they said, you know, if you pay taxes here on the Cape, and you sometimes pay a higher value on your zillion dollar house because you don't live here, right? Um, you want to be able to get to it. So, you know, there is that point. You know, you do have to. Yeah. Be able get to it if you want to. Now, I think your first point was that um, we have a fragile medical community here. Yes. And just being able to uh, attend to those folks who came from somewhere else that may have come with it and it hasn't started yet, you know, um, that's the kind of thing that uh, I think is most important for people to hear that they're all welcome. They, they pay taxes. They have a house here but it may be risky for them right because well, we may not be able to accommodate well and i'm quarantined for 23 days 24 days as of today they should be quarantined for 24 days as well that's that's the other point they need to stay with i you. agree yeah so yeah. you're involved in more things than i can shake a stick at i used to think i was much more busy than you but now you've surpassed me by a hundred times a hundred times I don't know. I, don't, I think it's because you're yeah. younger. I think it's because you're younger, really. Oh, <laughs> gotten old. I can finally catch up to you. <laughs> yeah, you can. Hey, so how's it going? How's it going? Um, you, you've got this project going, which I just think is adorable. And it's adorable because you took pictures of my kids. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And your schedule. Your I know. Schedule. I can't believe you got me on the schedule. Probably nobody will give any money if they see my mug or Joe. No, come on. <laughs> But tell me all about it. It's for the uh, Falmouth Service Center. It raises money for Falmouth, right? And the bank. Yeah, well, for anyone who uses the Falmouth Service Center, and they're, uh, you know, we, we're not just Falmouth. The Service right. Center services the Upper Cape, essentially. Oh, okay. Good. So, um, yeah, so my friend Lee, you know Lee Geisiker from Vagabond View, yeah. uh, and I were talking one day. Of course, both of us are out of work. I mean, she's out of work. Um, because she's a photographer and uh, she lives alone actually in your neighborhood. And she uh, was kind of, she had cleaned every closet in her house and was bored out of her mind. So, um, and I was similarly bored out of my mind. So we saw on Facebook that Ohio and um, Plymouth Mass were doing these uh, front porch uh, projects. So we just took a little tweak of that and it's kind of a photo essay on how people are surviving quarantine. And what that is, is people who have been closed up together for probably way too long, uh, get, out, <laughs> get out on their front steps. And uh, Lee, from 20 feet away, does a telephoto photograph of them. So we're chronicling the, the time. And Lee has committed to three digital professional photographs for a donation to the Falmouth Service Center that takes care of all of Upper Cape. And um, we, we actually are full. We, I, I don't know when this will air, but please don't contact me. We are done. Um, we, have over, we have over 300 people, 300 wow. families who have participated. And um, we really were booked right up until the 30th. So, uh, and that's given weather, if weather is good, because today I, I had to shift the 16 people for tomorrow to Friday because we know there's two days of bad weather coming. Yeah. So who knows if I'll have to do that again and again and again, but um, it's been a really beautiful project. I think one of the best things about it is hearing how people are getting through. Um, wives saying, oh my God, please come take our picture. My husband will shave. Um, <laughs> husband's saying, please come take our picture. My three teenage boys will finally shower. <laughs> Um, I've had single, a single woman say, I've just lost my job. I've just moved to Cape Cod. I know no one, but I feel like I need to pay it forward. Wow. Yeah. Or the uh, caretaker, caregiver of a 90 year old person um, who said, please come take our photo. It could be our last one. 
Ugh. You know, these are, it's yeah. just so warm. Everything is just so warm and lovely yeah. um, and mm -hmm. heartfelt. We have another woman who Lee is making a very special uh, arrival on her day off to go take her picture because she is not only an RN at Falmouth Hospital, um, but it's her anniversary and her husband turned 74. Oh my gosh. And we couldn't turn her down. It was like, yeah. she's on the front lines. She's got an anniversary and a husband uh, who's considerably older and yeah. got to get that photo. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Absolutely. it's been really, really fun for us and I'm glad we did it. Um, yeah. Now what's happening, because this is the, the way things evolve, is as it's picked up speed and people want to be a part of it, and I have to say sorry, I'm getting that kind of disappointed anger. Oh, well, that's, you know, you can't be, you can't do that. No good deed goes unpunished, Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> but now tell me, didn't Fox News pick this up? Yes, Fox News, National News, uh, followed us around on Sunday. And <clears throat> there's quite a, quite a wonderful little video going around. Um, I understand uh, one of my family members saw it in Sun Valley, Idaho. So I know that it exists. I've not seen it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I understand that we're making national news and we're not allowed to uh, publish it ourselves oh, until it's made the 10 day national circuit. I so um, we're hoping that we get a copy of that and can share it locally. Oh, um, yeah. Wonderful. And it, yeah. Yeah. But it was kind of fun to have them. We've gotten a lot of press on this. Right. Well, you, as, as I am, are a justice of the peace and you've done a COVID-19 wedding. I think you're the only one that has. All of my weddings, I had six weddings scheduled between now and the first part of May. All of them have been moved to next year. Really? Yeah, all oh, of them. Yeah. Well, one was canceled, which is very disappointing, but it is what it is, you know? Yeah. Um, they were coming from out. Um, you know, I think that um, most of the weddings that I've done during COVID have been, they have their license and they didn't want to deal with town halls closing. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just get the legality done. Yeah, and have a party. And and party another time. And uh, boy, that industry really got harmed, huh? Yeah. Um, think of all the the florists and the photographers and the event centers and oh yeah yeah and us. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. really been an impact. But um, yeah, if somebody has their license already, they they've been kind of reaching out and saying, can you just yeah. do us on the quiet? Nobody yeah. needs to know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we'll fake it next year. <laughs> I, I really think too, um, <laughs> that a lot of people haven't talked about it. Well, I've talked about it with other people on this show. There's a, been a real, nobody understands how big a trickle down, theor, uh, trickle down syndrome there is with this particular event. Um, oh my it is, I mean, our world stopped on its axis. Nothing's moving. It stopped exactly. three weeks ago. Everything yeah. stopped. And if you've got yeah. half a brain, you're not going to go to a large Easter church service this Sunday. If you have half a brain, if you don't have half a brain, I'm sure you'll show up. Uh, if you're a person of a certain age, you're not going out like you were. Uh, but everything, theater, music, uh, all the good things in life, um, going to see houses in person, all those things stopped. Just well, stopped. And you know what I miss most? What? Hug. Oh, I, a, I hear it. You know, I, I miss that um, being able to get close. Um, and it's been funny on this uh, tour of people's front porches, how many people start towards you and you go, whoa. <laughs> I know it's our inclination, but virtual, virtual. <laughs> you know? and, and it's not just because, you know, you almost feel like you have cooties, but you might. Yeah, you might. That's the we problem. We don't know. We don't know. Right? Well, we don't I mean, know. yeah, we don't know. And I think also that, that what's wonderful about what you were doing with that is you're making those families feel special. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of people, even some of the older folks have said, uh, look, I want to take this. I, I wanted this picture because I want my grandkids and kids to know we're okay. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they're the ones that can't necessarily Zoom, don't know how, right. have still not figured out their iPhone. Right. <laughs> so they're counting on us to send that photo out to say, guys, we're okay. And they know better than to go see them because the kids will run to them naturally. 
right now they can't be in the yard or visit from the car because the kids don't know better to stay or clear um so yeah it's been really interesting to see how this um photo project has really evolved and it's really become a, a study in social pandemic <laughs> That's what we'll call it. Well, wait till she sees what, yeah. what I'm wearing for my photo with Joe. <laughs> oh, good. I can't your, wait. I oh, love this photo, Your photo took the cake with you and your husband. Oh, my God. The hat, yeah, we, the main hat and the bathrobe and you with the, the buffalo check uh, pajama pants and the long <laughs> lip. It was, a, well, it was adorable. It was a hoot, but it was adorable. Thanks. It was really cute. Thanks. And I was on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, uh, yeah, we we wanted to lighten it up a little bit because um, because that's who we are. And quite frankly, I couldn't have gotten my husband dressed. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, the last thing I want to talk about, although we could talk all day, that's the problem. Uh, I would yeah, like we, to talk about Woods Hole. What's going on at Woods Hole Theater Company? You're the president, right? I am a very proud president of the Woods Hole Theater Company. Yeah. We are a, a small but mighty theater company, as you know. Um, we sadly, you know, had to cancel everything. And we are, we count on our spring activities to fund the rest of the year. Um, so we opened and closed, like on Broadway, our great show of a couple of white chicks sitting around talking, yeah. which you directed me and you were five. Uh, five years ago. Yeah. Thank you. I enjoyed the show. And that's why I brought it to Woods Hole. It was perfect for our stage. I was so looking forward to you seeing it so I could hear what my mama thought. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a great show. But, uh, and those ladies are absolutely uh, willing to resurrect it when this is done. But we felt on the 13th, Friday the 13th, that we, um, when we closed it, that it was the beginning of the pandemic and we thought it was socially responsible to yeah. close the show. So we did. And so that's, um, that's a $4,000 expense to our company because uh, we had paid for everything, you know, uh, and didn't get any ticket sales. Are they doing anything to, are the, I, and I don't know this, are any of the, the theater lending companies, are they doing anything for small groups to help them like if you want to put it up if it were closed and you wanted to put it up or they give me a half rate or anything like that or do you know you know we we've had some um we've the, the rights of the show we got yeah. totally reimbursed for that well, with well. an invitation to come back at a half price which would be oh, nice good. um yeah so we, we've had some of those oh. things of course woods hole isn't charging us for the community hall um yeah. i it, which makes yeah. sense because we didn't ultimately use it. Right. Uh, but all our print advertising right. and all of that stuff, you know, that was where the expense was. And yeah. then we had the fisherman stories, you know, um, Cape Cod fisherman stories booked and pretty much sold out for April 4th that we also had to um, postpone. That will come back because we've got beautiful, oh my gosh, the tellers for that are going to be terrific. Oh, sure. Um, and then we, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I said, oh, sure. That's great. So you're going to bring it yeah. back. And then, and then we had, you know, we have this wonderful program with uh, Beth Colt down at Quick's Hole where we, sorry, that was my cat. I um, saw the cat. <laughs> <laughs> of down at Quick's Hole where we did one Thursday night a month, we did soapbox stories. You've been a part of that where yeah. you go and, and tell a story during dinner. And unfortunately we've had, we had to cancel the last two months. Um, yeah. So it just because the restaurants aren't open. I mean, you, you can't gather, so you can't do it. So it's been kind of a, um, it's kind of a, it's put a halt to us. Um, we're getting creative about what to do online, but none of those things online uh, are going to generate any income. Right. Um, so uh, stay tuned. Who knows what's ahead of us? But we're, we're plodding along. In Woods Hole, plodding along. Well, that's a, and that's good. You're a small theater company. You you can be agile, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, and it's not like um, the Woods Hole Theater Company hasn't had seasons that have paused in the past. Um, we're it's a unique community down there. Uh, so 
I, I think that we're going to be okay. You know, it's, it's an education community. So a lot of those students have been sent home. So the hole is kind of quiet right now anyway. Sure, sure. Well, the Captain yeah. Kids, the Captain Kids closed, so it would be quiet. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the mayor has no place to hang out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, well, listen, anything else of good vibes you can get us? How are you getting through this? Um, well, I'm keeping busy. You know, the front porch program has really kept me very busy. Yep. I'm meeting with my clients um, either by Zoom or on telephone, trying to do a lot of uh, reaching out. I've got, I've got nine closings coming up. And, wow. and quite frankly, those closings are um, tricky, right? Because if the attorney's office is closed, and we're doing everything virtually. So it means that deeds have to be sent out by FedEx. Thank God they're still running yeah. Um, yeah. because everything needs to be signed. So I've got logistical things keeping me uh, busy, which has been nice. I have new listings coming on at the end of the month. Good. I have been um, actively praying for some folks who have uh, COVID and um, have been hospitalized. So uh, I've got that going on. Um, it's one of those things where you just have to stay above it. I am not watching the news or listening to it 24 seven. Yeah. I highly recommend people take that out of their, out of their, you just, you, there's so much a body can take, right? Um, stop listening, do it once a day. Don't have it on, don't have it be the background. It's subliminal negativity, let that go. I did start my first garden. I saw the plants on Facebook. My crops. The problem is I have no place to put them once they grow. Well, don't you have a, don't you have a garden outside? No, we disassembled it because we're putting up a thing there, a patio. Oh. So I'm ever hopeful I will have I will have I will meet foster parents <laughs> <laughs> for my seedlings. What well, should I tell you? Go ahead. I talk, and, I talk and sing to them every day, like my grandma would. <laughs> okay. Well, just so you know, I, because we have varmints, we have groundhogs, um, we have rabbits, we have fox, we have deer, because I live on the time. We have a beautiful place. view. We have a beautiful view, but it brings in the varmints, as I like to call them. I'm from Ohio, so I can call them varmints. And yeah. I... I garden in pots. I have grow pot, grow boxes. I don't know whether you've heard of them. Go online and look. Yeah. They are fabulous. I have grow. I probably got three bushels of tomatoes out of one grow grow, uh, grow box. Uh, they are amazing. Wow. I do pots. I do my herbs in a couple of small raised beds. For some reason, they don't go after the herbs, which is a good thing because then I would have to get my gun out, which I don't own, but I would get one for this. Um, it, you'd be surprised what you can grow in uh, various containers if you have to. Well, I would love to share some things with you when you're ready. Oh, excellent. I'll be ready. Well, we can actually, because I'm well, you don't have to leave them at the, at the beginning of your roadway. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I can have Lee, Lee drop them in your driveway. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Hopefully I've got by then. Yeah, I've got beans and zucchini and wow. um, carrots and and Brussels sprouts and every herb imaginable. So great, I got you covered. <laughs> Excellent. So Annie, I want to thank <laughs> you for being with me today. It's I can't believe we talked all this time. It's it's the time has gone by too quickly. Oh, that's good. I yeah. guess that's good. I know. That's who we are. I, that's the way we roll, as they say. That's exactly it. Well, and thank if, you for having me. Well, and if I stay in any longer and keep eating, you will be rolling me. <laughs> me too. And what is it with the baking of bread? I don't know. My I can't do it. And banana bread. That's my two things. Oh. I know. Well, I'm glad I'm not in your house, but I, I can't do the baking. I did make a quiche today. That's, That's good. a little bit healthy. Yeah, it's a little bit healthy. Listen, thanks again. Tell your hubby I said hello and to behave himself if possible. We always he have is. long conversations when we see each other. Not that we see each other often, but we do. Yeah. Um, anyway, take good, good care of yourself. Stay safe. Wash your hands. And we'll see you next time on another Cape Conversation. Thank you for joining me today.
Annie Hartcool is a load of laughs and lots and lots of fun, that's for sure. And she gave you some great tips if you want to sell your house right now or thinking about it, no time to waste. There are people buying houses. And she also gave us some great ideas on how to keep your sanity during all of this. So thank you for joining me today, and I'll look forward to seeing you another time. Wash your hands, be safe, wear your mask. We'll see you next time on another Cape Conversations.